Hey folks, welcome back to the Off Grid Workshop. This week we've had this Contiki in here. It's a massive van, tag axle, and we put a really interesting system into it. So I'm going to take you through a bit of a walkthrough and show you everything that we've done. So let's take a look. Okay, and here is where all the magic happens. So starting off, we've got one Fogstar 280 amp hour 24 volt battery. Got space here. We're going to be putting a second one in uh, in about a month's time. We're just waiting for them to come back into stock. But yeah, the, the, we've gone for a 24 volt system on this van, mainly just so we can maximize the battery storage and get the most out of it. Got a Multi Plus 3 KVA, the version two, which has the second AC output. And so uh, that's gonna give the customer lots of power to be able to run aircon and all sorts of things like that. Obviously a Lynx distributor with the isolator and the shunt attached directly to that. The Ryan XS 1400, so charging input is coming in from the engine at 12 volts and it's outputting 24 volts. Uh, we've then got the Able Mail uh, battery uh, maintainer, so that's to look after the engine battery. Uh, we've got a DC DC converter, so this is taken from the 24 volt battery system down to 12 volt for the 12 volt electric in the van. So this is basically going out there, running under the floor here to where the old batteries used to be under this locker and we've connected it to the wiring that the old batteries were connected to. And then we've got three MPPTs, which uh, is because we've got three different size solar panels on the roof. So we're maximizing the space and split them out and then obviously have them on their own MPPT so that we get the most out of them. And then of course we have the servo here as well. So these two switches to explain what those are. So we've started doing that recently where we're actually putting a switch on the power going into the servo so that if customers need to power cycle the servo, they can just use the switch here. And normally we would run the screen on the same switch. So the power to the screen on the same switch, but because this is a 24 volt system and we tend to run one and a half millimeter wires for the screen, and then on the end of that, we put a USB adapter, so 12 volt to USB, and that USB adapter is, can only run on 12 volts. So what we've done is we've got a second switch here, which is essentially to power cycle the screen itself, and that's running off the DC-DC converter. And uh, that's only because sometimes the servo hangs and sometimes it's a bit of a pain to get to the power switch on the actual servo itself to unplug it and replug it in. So we've started doing that now where we are putting in a, an inline switch on the feed to the servo and screen so that if need be, the customer can just flick the switch, it'll power cycle those two. And then if, if they're frozen or anything like that, then obviously it take care, takes care of that. We've got the gas, the LPG tanks coming into the servo as well. So I'll show you that on the screen in a minute. And then the MultiPlus is wired in directly to the Sargent system. So as I mentioned, uh, this is the one that has the option of the ACR2 port. So we've put in our usual fridge solar dump on there as well. And uh, because the customer wanted the ability to run everything in the van off the inverter, we've put uh, basically the, the MultiPlus powers everything on the consumer unit except for the fridge, which is powered by the ACR2. So we've got protection between the electric hookup and the MultiPlus itself. So yeah, that's wired around there to the Sergeant. All of the glands and the solar come through into this cupboard above the fridge here. Uh, we put in a option, or we mounted the customer's Starlink as well. So we've got an ethernet coming through there as well, which goes to the router here. And we put in an extra socket up there that, that they can power it from. So that's the Gen 3. Uh, Starlink. So here's the servo. We've got uh, 260 watts going out there. So that's because it's powering the fridge. The fridge solar dump we've got programmed on the window of about 90, where it comes on at 95%, and the battery it gets to 95%, and it turns off when the battery drops to 70%. So it gives you a nice window to be able to run the fridge when you have excess solar and sort of surplus power. Uh, so yeah, it's looking pretty good. If we tap in here, we can see the three MPPTs and obviously turn the inverter on off, grid current limit, things like that. If we go across to the levels here, we can see the gas cylinder. So we've got two tanks in here, a uh, 11 kilo and a six kilo tank, and those are wired in there. We can see the levels on those tanks. And here is the solar. So the solar, there was actually a couple of Truma 
semi-flex panels, but obviously because of the voltage of those panels, they wouldn't actually work for the 24-volt system unless you connected them in series. In any case, they're really not that efficient and that good. So we landed up putting a 360-watt panel across the back of the van like that, and it just straddled basically over the top of the, of the semi-flex panels, uh, mainly because our experience is removing these. Often you can land up delaminating the van and things like that. It's, for the most part, depending on how they've been installed, you're better off actually just leaving them if you can. And we were able to put the panels on over the top of them, and these can just lay dormant here. The customer was happy with that. So we've got a 360-watt Victron panel there. Then we've got two 100-watt photonic panels connected here. And then we've got a Victron 215-watt uh, panel at the front there. So, yeah, all wired separately going to their own MPPT, as I showed you. And then down here, we've got the Gen 3 Starlink mounted over here. And obviously, that's all wired in to... Uh, through the roof. We used the original gland that, was, that the Truma panels were on and then added a second one for the Starlink and the additional solar panel. So that's the solar setup. And of course the gas low sensors here. We've done videos on these in the past but that's what they look like in here. So there we have it folks. Pretty fun install. Pleased with how it all turned out. Running a 24 volt battery and inverter system on a motorhome. And yeah, it's going to give the customer a lot of options and a lot of off-grid time. So yeah, we're keen to see how they get on with it. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in talking to us about a similar install, or if you have any questions, then reach out to us and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.